In my time with it, I've enjoyed the Mongoose Malice, which really equates to any of the Mongoose fat tire bikes that are 325 or under, because it's really all about those wheels and those fat tires. That said, there are a few things about these bikes that I would change, because as fun as they are, just some small updates have the potential to make them fun -er. And for my approach, I started by picking up some wake handlebars and got the bike up to 31.8 millimeter diameter. I feel it really needs. That means a new stem, it's wake too, matches the bars. And since I'm changing bars, I thought it would also be a good time to get rid of the twist shifter. And I'm replacing them with Shimano trigger shifters. I'm keeping the bike at 7 speeds, and these should make shifting easier. By the way, there's links to all these parts down in the description. And you can see these brake levers are different. These are the hydraulics I took off Project Hydro during Stage 3 upgrades. And that saddle, I mentioned it wasn't very comfortable, and I found this one for $15 on Amazon. It's supposed to be gel, but it's stiff gel as it is, but either way, it should still be better than the factory saddle. I think it's going to look good, and it has a relief group. For the free will, I'm ditching the 14 to 28 tooth for a mega wrench. This one was sent to me by a subscriber, Daniel P. Thanks, Daniel. I told you I would put this to good use. Now, I appreciate the grease warning. I'll be sure to give it a good cleaning before I install it. Even though I've shown this before, I keep getting asked how to remove a free will. I use a park tool free will remover and a wrench. Now, I pre-loosen this one, but it just spins off counterclockwise. Now, I have seen people remove these without the proper tool, even in a destructive manner to get it off, but if you're going to be replacing it, what's it really matter? The important thing is that it doesn't require a tool to get the free will back on. I use one, but if someone doesn't have one, it can be spun on hand tight and pedal leverage can be used to snug it down the rest of the way. Now if there's one thing about these upgrades that does require a bit of knowledge, that's rerunning the shifter cable and getting it properly adjusted. That's not saying it's hard because it's actually pretty easy, but it does take a bit of knowledge and some patience to get it right. In my opinion, the Malice looks great factory, but upgraded, it looks even better, more appealing to the eye, especially the new bars and stem. I've found wake bars and stems to be a good combo that's effective and cheap. I did have to add a spacer to make up a bit of height, and the only one I had was an FSA translucent, but it works. For grips, I used these sub $9 lock-ons, but I found them on a promotion for $3.69. Here's the shift window and the triggers of that new Shimano shifter setup, and beside it, the hydraulic brake levers. These are the recycled after parts. They should be a slight improvement over the factory brakes, but they are no longer available. I also recycled the pedals. I'm changing out the pedals on Project Hydro, so the Rock Bros go here now. And getting a workout from the factory Shimano Torni derailleur is my subscriber supplied free will, Mega Range Glory. And all this comes together to make a noticeably better ride. It's more responsive control thanks to the new bars, and the combo of the new bars and the new stem puts things in a more comfortable position for me. Though the new grips, they are a bit rough on the hands. I mean, they were cheap grips, $3.69. I think they're like $8.99 now or something, but I ordered silicone grips and they didn't arrive in time for the video. Rest assured, they're definitely going to be replacing these. Grips aside, as much as I like the new bar setup, the biggest impact is with the shifter and freewheel combo. Having trigger shifters makes the experience far more pleasurable, and the factory tourney and the factory chain walk up and down the mega range freewheel perfectly. And all this comes together to make hill climbing now tolerable. Actually, it's not bad at all. It's easily doable even while seated without burning up my legs trying to pedal. And even though those hydraulic disc brakes are after parts, it's far better at braking too. And all this makes for a setup of how I think the Malice should have been equipped, or at least a variant available with similar components. So what do you think? Was this an improvement or even worth my time? I think so, but comment below and tell me. Now it's patron shout out time. Thanks Christopher for being a patron. There's a link in the description if you want more info on being a patron, but patron or not, I hope you're at least a subscriber. And speaking of subscribers, it's time to close out this video looking at subscriber-submitted big box bikes. Enjoy these, and have a great day.